Hey there folks and welcome back to the Carpetania campaign. Last time we finished taking on Olcadia? I can't quite remember the name, didn't watch the last episode super recently, but we took on the nation that we had uh, essentially enveloped territorially and secured the big name at last. Long awaited and well deserved I think. Could be bigger though, it is definitely being kind of shortened by the presence of these other tribes kind of in between our greater extensive territory, but we will be addressing that in the future. In this episode, probably not going to do any wars. I think I'm going to basically take it easy and just uh, regenerate my resources and kind of get ready for the war against the Tagus League, which I think has actually grown by a member. Yeah, uh, Bletonicia has joined the League I mentioned, I think, last episode, thinking about potentially allying with them in order to do this war. Looks like that is off the table. Uh, actually, Wakea may have to be my ally again. They probably would not accept it, though. Yeah, they're pretty mad at me. Understandably. So we'll have to figure something out. Uh, we do have Topolia as an ally. And I'll figure out an ally before I start the war. It doesn't need to be something I set up way in advance. In fact, it might be uh, disadvantageous if I set it up way in advance. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure that everything is set as it needs to be. Yes, looks fine. Can't remember what I was doing at the very end of the last episode. Probably moving tribesmen to Toletum. That seems to be what is going on right now. We did build the city of Toletum as well, and we want to build a port here at some point and start building up a bit of a river navy, but that's going to have to wait. Let us unpause and resume. Also, I think I was trying to address the the loyalty problems in these locations. Yeah, it's pretty bad over here. It's bad here too. Um, it's, it could be worse, I suppose, but everyone here is Iberic. I guess actually having this beyond religious conversion is fine, given that the provincial loyalty loss is so low and converting some people over here is something I need to get to eventually, given that these are Iberic pop, uh, populations. <clears throat> Right, we do have a colony here, yep. I gotta keep in mind that re uh, reorganizing and kind of redistributing my Carpetadians through the colony mechanic out of my core is actually part of why I haven't had a larger levy <clears throat> despite all of my territorial growth. Your levy, of course, uh, in terms of the actual number of members of the levy, whether the levy exists is based on controlling regions, but the levy size is flatly based on your population of your integrated pops. Uh, so in my case, that would just be Catapetanian population. So that is something for us to be aware of. Let's move some more tribesmen over. Or actually, should we? Let's actually go through and take a look at the um, the resource production buildings that we've got. Uh, this is not gonna be the right way to look for it. Um, let's check up here. We've got our 10 slaves. I think down here, we've got our three cattle. I think there was one more spot that I was moving slaves to at some point. Maybe not, actually. I do have uh, pre-existing farming settlements built from previous uh, conquests, so... Or rather, they were there previously and I conquered them, so we shall see if I can move slaves there. I think for now I'm going to save some money up. Yeah, this war is going to be very, uh, very complicated. The good thing is that all of these nations are very compact together. So we'll be fighting uh, Calantiencia, we'll be fighting Caluria, We'd be fighting um, Ige, Detania, we'd be fighting Deniquia, and we'd be fighting Leten uh, Bletonicia. And I think actually, given where all these members are, this league might actually exist specifically <laughs> because they're all scared of me. Understandably so. They've been watching the Carpetania campaign. They know how little I regard their independence. They also fortified this province at last. That's a little irritating. But this does present us with a chance to get a fort that is quite strategically helpful. Although, actually, I do have Miakum still, so maybe not so important after all. A religious procession. The struggle between the religious echelons of our society and the peasants has recently come into light, as the populace at large feels like the religious ceremonies are inaccessible and distant. On the other hand, our high priest and his attendants demand the distance needed to do their jobs properly. An argument and argument the peasants, and I guess they argue, the peasants have no rights to the inner workings of our religious ceremonies. We will translate Fail's Paradox once again. All right, so I don't want to lose stability. I do want to gain stability. Oh, I think I really want to gain stability right now. 
Um, reduced omen power is probably fine right now. Now, if we lose omen power, what's this going to do to this bonus? Probably not that much. We may lose maybe 1% tribesman happiness. In exchange for 5% state happiness for all of my druidics, which is a lot. So the only losers from this option would be the tribesmen who are Iberic, but they're already not happy, so it doesn't matter that much. Um, and religious tech investment, I don't care about right now. Lose loyalty with this super loyal guy. But I also get six stability. I think this is the one that's called for. Plus, a six stability will more than make up for the tribesman happiness loss. So with modifiers like this, keep in mind how much stability affects population happiness. Generally speaking, I mean, the only thing to keep in mind here is, or the only thing that would counteract that is the fact that this lasts for 120 months. So that would be 10 years. But I think I'm fine with reduced omen power. I've got a very zealous leader, and um, it's not like I am working with any omens that I need to be at a specific amount for anything. So let's go ahead and say that the peasants are right. It is time to open the gates of the temple, get our stability up. I've been pretty, pretty flippant with stability, but that is going to help a little bit. All right. Let us resume. It's building up my manpower. Yeah, keeping in mind that the manpower gain is flatly based on the happiness of the um, of the Carthaginians. So, speaking of happiness of cultures, can I do something to address the the situations over here? Things are starting to get a little calm down around here, which is good to see. Not enough for me to switch the capital back, but it is improving as I boost up my stability. I could uh, improve things further by doing a culture thing, but that would require losing stability. And I'm not sure that will be that will be the right call. Yeah, five stability. I I don't think so. Six percent culture happiness from them. I don't think it's worth more than just flatly having the stability giving me culture happiness to everybody. We have got ourselves. Ooh. Speaking of stability, I'll absolutely take this. Eighteen gold for six stability. Yes, please. All right, thirty-six stability now. That is. Going to improve things even further, maybe after the monthly tick, this will be recalculated. Things are starting to settle down up here, that's pretty good. Also, let's remember, 1st of October is an omen. There we go. Speaking of omens, um, so now we can see what this is doing. So we lost about 1% tribesman happiness from this omen. Is it worth going to Kandamius? Am I going to go into war in the next five years on purpose? And if I am, I should select this. I don't think I will. I think I'm going to commit to five years of peace. And with that in mind, Il uh, Iko Walauna may make sense to reselect here for the tribes of inhabitants. I'm trying to stabilize things before I progress further. I've been on kind of a war path, and I almost sort of let it get out of my control. But I think last episode I wisely pumped the brakes and slowed down and started to try and apply some triage to my furious <laughs> Iberic uh, new uh, residents in my nation. So I think uh, Iko Walauna is going to make sense again just to continue giving us that boost, especially given that around here tribesman is the dominant, it's this uh, green one here, it is the dominant type of person. So let's see. Well, maybe not so much actually. We do have a lot of slaves around here. But Tribesman makes up most of the non-slave population. Hmm. I think... I think because I... I think going for Ika Walauna will at the very least kind of prevent me from going to war a little too prematurely. Because I would be tempted to go to war once I have a bit more manpower. But I think forcing myself to wait five years is probably the smart decision. So let's go with Ika Walauna. The rivers of the earth will guide us away from the, the sword here. All right, um, leave that there. Okay, that is good. And then, since we are on the first of October, let's take a look at our general, um, our general situation here. Now, here in uh, Contestania, things are looking fine. Maybe you should change Borderlands. Might be, might be the right idea. Over here with these two, things are fine right now. So we will let them do religious conversion. So in in fact, actually, let's let's spend a bit longer this particular episode to set up our economy plans here. I've been so focused on war. Let's have a dedicated ec economy and development episode for the first time, I think, in this campaign. Nice change of pace. 
Now here in Katapatania, do we have the imports that we want? I haven't really looked at this in a while. Importing for money and for the livestock for the, well, we don't need the livestock now. We can, we can switch this one because we're getting a lot of extra livestock already. So we can go ahead and cancel that route and switch that to something because we were getting the livestock bonus from having just so much livestock locally. I think because we're a regional power now, we have access to more options than we did before. Still no wild game, though. That is irritating. I think that... Um, let's see. I don't think wood's going to be super necessary, even if we plan to build a port, because this is all medium and heavy ships, which we're not going to be building uh, for our river purposes. Hmm. Is there anything that gives me national tribesman happiness? Surely, right? Yeah, that'd be Wode, which I can't get access to right now. Hmm. Should have looked at this between episodes, but here we are looking at it together during the episode. Choices have been made. <laughs> All right. Um, I could get one cloth just to get myself the, uh, the extra bonus, but I don't think this bonus is that helpful right now. I mean, the stopgap is definitely just getting precious metals again, because we can get it from uh, Tiberia up there. Let's go for precious metals. I don't see any other obvious uh, pairings to get. So we're basically trading for vegetables and then trading the rest of our slots for precious metals. That was the last precious metal available as well, so that's actually pretty, pretty efficient right there. So that's going to boost up our income even further. Commerce is starting to develop into something of a uh, value here. We can also see here that if you look at the amount that Karpatania is earning and then the amount these other provinces are earning, they're not that far away. That goes to show that we have a good export economy right now because the other provinces are only getting their commerce income from exports, whereas Karpatania is getting it from mixed importing and exporting because no other place in our nation except for Toletum has import slots as far as I'm aware. I guess I should check that. Nope. Didn't think that they would. All right, that is fine. Okay. So with that being addressed, uh, let's go back in here and take a look and see. Now, what is our population promotion looking like in Toletum? It's moving along pretty quick. 12% per month. That's quite strong. Given that we have the mixture of livestock and our government... Uh, where is it? Uh, our federated tribe bonus. Um, where is it? Here it is, 25%. So that's 50%. That's pretty strong. Okay. Hmm. I think because we don't have that much money right now, we can't really do too much actual construction or whatnot right now, but we can t sort of take a look around and see how things are looking. We have a furious noble down here. That's not so great. Um, let's see here. Cultural assimilation is very slow. We actually have positive loyalty over here. That is a nice development. A non karpatania location has positive loyalty. This is a pretty small province in terms of what we control, which is why that's the case. Over here, we're uh, stable now. Over here, it's stabilizing. And then, wow, this place too. Okay. I think that Beia Superioris is the spot I want to permanently be the provincial capital as well, so that is that is handy. Yeah, I talked about this before. It lines up well with everything. I think I want to fortify this next. Well, I shouldn't make plans like that. I don't know for sure what I want to do. That is certainly an option. So let's make sure to set up a, <clears throat> a cultural simulation policy. We can probably do two right now in spots that are of the right religion. Even though it's better to culturally assimilate somebody and then convert them, I'd rather start, because culturally converting, uh, culturally assimilating somebody is also faster if they're your religion already. So I'd rather focus on where I have the advantage than focus on where I have less of a disadvantage, if that makes sense. So let's see here. This place is 100% Celt-Iberian. Hold on. Um, Maybe up here first, honestly. Yeah. Uh, because let's keep in mind that Waluka is a city. So we sometimes, I think, forget that we do have a city up here. 
And it's actually a pretty happy city, all things considered. It is a colony and all that. Um, actually, well... I'm a little bit worried about switching this away from local autonomy. I think it's still recovering a little too much. These guys, though, are definitely in a good position to be uh, to be addressed there. Can I see the population size of a province? I'm sure that I can somewhere, right? Uh, there we go. Okay, so we're looking at uh, Lobatania. 23. Actually, uh, Celtiberia Meridionalis is, at, is much, much larger population, and I also think it's probably ready to be switched over. So let's go there first. I'm, I'm working on stuff in Contestania first because I don't gain tyranny for this. And I'd rather get my core kind of figured out here. All right, so now it's time to finally start switching to cultural assimilation. The monocultural uh, strats are returning. I know it's my, my favorite go-to thing. Even though I'm switching things up with my Republican plans, I am going to be keeping things the same with my monocultural plans. I'm not going to do cultural assimilation in this game. I feel like I need to do a monocultural campaign with Invictus first, and then I'll try out uh, cultural assimilation in a different circumstance. Maybe when I'm playing as somebody in the Mediterranean where there's a lot more cultural diversity, uh, maybe in like Turkey or whatnot. So let's go ahead and grab a cultural simulation. Yep, they can support that, that's good. Now, Lobotania I think will be second here. Cultural simulation, get that going. And then over here, also we're gonna get a lot more money because now the the effect of local autonomy on reducing output won't be active. So that's, this is also a way to make some money indirectly. As for these guys, these guys are all um, uh, Iberic, so I do want to have them convert. Uh, I guess I could try to, to assimilate them first, but this is already active, so I'm not going to really focus on changing that necessarily. Now, as for the governors, I think that the governor of... Now, the other thing, too, is to, the reason to do it here in Celtiberia Meridionalis, or rather in, um, in Contestania is that uh, this governor won't be changed. The other governors, I think I do want to change, particularly the Terrakinesis governor. This corruption is definitely not helping the loyalty problems over there. And she, aside from the one in Lusitania, which is a very small province, a very small region, this governor I need to change ASAP. So we are going to be addressing that. Should I do that right now, though, is the question. I don't have enough PI to immediately start changing policies back. But I can't imagine... I think if I lose 0.07 from the governor corruption, that will be enough to make up for this being changed over. I think this is probably the right call to do this now. Let's see here. Um, got ourselves a 9 finesse character. Let's see here. 7 finesse. 0 corruption. What other traits do you have? That, I don't, that one doesn't matter. This one, I think, doesn't matter. This one might be handy. Let's grab uh, Okinea Galba. All right. And as expected, she switched these all to be acquisition of wealth. I've spent a lot of political influence trying to... Oh, that. Oh, look at that. All right, well, that, I'll take this, honestly. Even if harsh treatment is probably a little harsh, we were at the verge of disloyalty, so I think the AI made the right call there. This is an interesting decision. Okay, these other three that she switched to acquisition of wealth of the religious one, I will switch these back. Although actually, things are looking pretty stable right now. This one might be ready, honestly, to switch over to um, cultural assimilation because acquisition of wealth and cultural assimilation will both affect loyalty the same. And this is just about stable. Although this would be a very risky one to because it has the city. Hmm. Probably overthinking it a little bit, which, uh, I mean, this is a misadventure, Imperial Realm campaign. That's kind of what you get <laughs> with this particular setup. But uh, I think I made the right call there. Mostly it's just getting rid of the corruption is important. Let's keep an eye on this, too. Um, maybe I should make friends with her, too. Nah, that's probably not necessary. I think we should be fine. Drinking some water there. <clears throat> it's good to stay hydrated. I'm going to speed up to speed three, <coughs> excuse me, because uh, this is just a peacetime episode and I'm just trying to recover my resources and kind of get stuff sorted out. All right, we got some seriously good PI gain. Now, let's keep in mind that at this point, we are able, if we were so inclined, 
to do a reform once we had 40 stability. And I think what I'll do is click Investigate Travel Reform as soon as we do have 40 stability. So I'm going to save my stability for that. Remember, this doesn't cost stability. It just requires that much stability in our pool in order to click the button. As for this one, yeah, I don't think Toiletum's going to reach 40 anytime soon. I guess it's at 35 now. Maybe I can reach 40. Okay, I'm not going to worry about this, though, before I do the reform button. Keeping in mind, again, that uh, doing the reform button only adds the mission to the pool. We'd have to make the decision to abandon the Matter of Beatica mission, which would be fine. This isn't the right direction to go in right now. We haven't really been using it that much. Oh, we lost our high priest. From murder. Okay. We've been informed that Taximegulus Galibus was found brutally murdered in his home just last night. The investigators have reported that a convenient battering ram was used in the crime. <laughs> what? Oh no. A device known to be favored by Ive <laughs> Oh, Her calling card, folks. It, it could only be her. <laughs> However, we have no hard evidence to link her to the crime. <laughs> Regardless, we should be watchful. <laughs> Ive, what? <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, that's... I'll say that is definitely... Um, that's a first for me. The Battering Ram. Famous weapon for murder. Yes, of course. A travesty, but we are powerless to act. I don't really want to play around with the loyalty of a clan chief, so we're going to politely uh, <laughs> look, look the other way from that one. Okay, sure. <laughs> wow. Okay, that, that was quite something. Um, let's go ahead and just throw... Let's see here. Yeah, let's get the character with slightly from a slightly less content family. This is from the same family that just uh, committed the murder, but that is fine. As someone who actually is uh, trained in real-life criminal law, I will say that I've never heard of a case where someone used a battering ram to commit a murder, so that is definitely one for the casebooks. <laughs> Oof, all right. Uh, the Carthaginian Revolt wants stone. All right, that's fine. How's Carthage doing, by the way? Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Having some trouble, Carthage. I like to see it. Oh my god. Syracuse going crazy. Oh, oh, what? <laughs> oh, Pyrrhus. You madman, Pyrrhus. Look at this. Pyrrhus did it. Pyrrhus took over so much of... Oh, wow. Are we going to see a, a game without Roman play? They're not doing so well right now. This is actually kind of interesting. I would love to see a game where Rome doesn't play a huge role. Also, Etruria going... Rome is just getting smacked around. They've lost to Etruria, they've lost to Epirus, and yeah, wow. So Carthage and Rome are struggling this game, but Syracuse, Epirus, and Etruria are actually kind of going crazy. That is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that because this is just a way to mix it up a little bit from the normal, the dyad I have to think about of Rome and Carthage. All right, interesting to know about that. The Greeks want stone. All right. Oh, someone else wanted stone too, but too late. Gave it to the Greeks. <laughs> Battering ram murder. Oh my gosh. Wild. Absolutely wild. All right, things are looking fine. I missed a couple months of this. That's fine. Um, I should probably switch this to be cultural assimilation too, given that we have so many slaves around here as well. I guess that doesn't matter. That part doesn't matter so much, but all the tribesmen that we moved in. Let's get this to cultural assimilation as well. Just make sure my core is uh, working away at this. This is very much a long-term thing in the background. But we will start to get more Kabapatanians. Even if we're going to lose the manpower in the short term, we are gaining a lot of manpower just because of the happy tribesmen. Uh, yeah. Also, Federated Tribe is helping out a little bit, which is great. If we could get one more good stability event, that would really push us over the 40, which would be quite handy. But I think, I think it's not going to happen anytime soon. Let's just progress. Nice, chill, economy-focused episode. Here, leave that alone. Let's actually check and see over here. Pop info. We do have conversion, 76. Okay, things will 
things will happen there. I guess I could switch it, but uh, I think it's probably not worth it. Where was I? Let's go back over here. Okay, so in Bayetica, um, which is this one here, things are secure, but they're not secure enough to switch, so we're going to leave that alone. Lusitania, things are not secure, so we're going to leave that alone. Uh, Terrakinesis, we'll go back to that in a moment. Because uh, Terrakinesis is the main region where I've actually been... We got a civic advance? Ooh, okay. Uh, Terrakinesis has been the main region that I've added territory, so we have a lot more stuff in Terrakinesis. All right. Um, or no, we need a researcher. We didn't, we didn't get a civic advance. We need a civic advancer. Okay. Ooh, getting a polymath could be quite good. Um... Are you better at anything else? I think I'd rather get the character with the chance to get additional innovations. Even if Aramed is a lot more competent. She's also super corrupt. I don't really want to have her in a position where I'm paying her. And the next best character is the same finesse level as Winutius. So Winutius, welcome to the team. Another <laughs> Galbus character. So many of them. Holy moly. Um, is your trait not going to show up there? Hold on. Didn't you have a trait that gave us a, uh, a thing there? No, I, I meant to click this character. Whoops. All right, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorted that out. Very good. Finally getting some serious manpower here. I want to hopefully... Uh, I think that on October 1st of 475, we will go ahead and actually <clears throat> prepare for war. Maybe get prepared a little before that. We'll see what happens in terms of them entering into other wars, but we shall see. Who do I have claims on, by the way, in this whole group? So... Carencia, that's about it. I could fabricate a claim on somebody else, keeping in mind that Carencia does bring in essentially everybody in play. If I, for example, claimed... Um, oh, did Calatensia leave this league? No, they're just allied with them, that's right. So Calentancy would just bring in uh, Currency, but they'd also bring in Celtica, who I really don't want to fight right now. Not because I'm scared of them, because their size doesn't actually mean a larger levy because it's one region, but it's just so much more territory to have to think about. I'd rather focus more over here. Currency does bring in the most people. So Currency is very cost-effective, given that I have the claim already. We'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, Bedro Land, a dispute between the clans of Beowessus Galbus and Mandubrachius Arosis, has arisen as both of them want certain valuable land in Bedro. Bedro is in Tordulia Orientalis, which is. Oh, geez. It's over here somewhere. Right, it's down here. Bedro is here. Okay. Both sides have their claims to the area, and supporting one of them over the other could end up with disloyalty from the spurned clan. Both of the clan chiefs have offered to support the nation with gifts if they are given the region. Bayouestus has offered us more troops, while Manubrachius has offered us a donation of gold. Ooh. 25% local manpower from Bedro, though. That's the issue. Okay. If Bedro was a metropolis, this would be awesome. But... Bedro isn't a metropolis, and this option also gives us just flat gold, which, even though I like manpower, manpower from Bedro specifically is not going to be very impressive. What, what population is even in Bedro? Just a couple people. I think I'm going to give it to Mandu Brachius. Um, unfortunately, Bayouessus is the one with less loyalty, but he's already pretty loyal, so this won't be a huge issue. Alright, we'll take the bribe, essentially, is what that is. Fine with me. All right, we can now start to make some switches around here, and some of these are actually pretty secure now, which is great. Hold on, let's come over here again to governorships. All right, uh, Terrakinesis, um, things here, let's see here. So this is fine. I mean, having it be on her treatment is going to damage the province a little bit, but it's not a very populated province, so at the moment... I think that because the spot isn't super populated... And it's mostly populated by slaves, whose happiness doesn't affect uh, loyalty. It's essentially 20 pops having their output reduced and having um, a slightly increased migration speed of leaving. 
but I think that's probably fine. Most of the people here, I guess that being said, most of the people here are of Kalpatanian culture. Yeah, a large number of them are. So I'd actually rather not lower their output quite so much, because they're contributing to manpower and whatnot. No, not that. Let's change this to be local autonomy, I think, because this is mostly hurting Kalpatanians, honestly. And they're not the ones who are going to be super furious. All right. This will readjust. This will end up being fine, even though it's it looks kind of dangerous right now. So we shall leave that alone. Also, tyranny is reducing. That's pretty good. Again, tyranny right now as a tribe doesn't matter that much, but I want to try and avoid a high level of tyranny when I reform. That would be preferable. Our expansion is reducing as well. Yeah, this aggressive expansion thing is really hurting our stability. So we got to keep in mind that aggressive expansion does have a pretty serious cost. Also, I've got to pause on 1st of October. That's totally fine, though. It's more of a, uh, a general kind of aspiration than a specific goal or plan. Rome wants livestock. Let's see if that helps you, Rome. Let's see if you... Ooh. I guess it does help them. <laughs> they just immediately swallowed up tons of Etruria when I wasn't looking. All right. Good for you. Jeez, this is... Dare I look... Oh no. Oh, oh boy. Oh my god. Oh, oof. I daren't. I shouldn't look up there. <laughs> it's just the bad place to look. Building up our treasury. Very good. We are going to want to port before this war. Spread of ideas. Hey, look at that. Because I want to use ships in order to uh, fight the, uh, the Tagus League to some extent. This is an advantage I don't think any of them are going to have. So let's actually switch over to importing stone uh, ahead of that. Assuming that there is gold available to reselect afterwards, which I hope. Oh yeah, there's tons of gold. This is Iberia. Everyone here has gold. This should be fine. All right, let's get some stone going. Not my own stone. Let's get some stone externally just for a little bit more money. Now we can build a port in Toletum. So our first city with two buildings, that, at least that we've built. We've had cities that we've conquered that have two buildings. Building a port in Toletum. So it gives us the following modifiers. Um, it also shows the results down there, which is quite handy. So extra civ level is great. Uh, this might actually push us uh, closer to 40 as well, which is uh, pretty great as well. So let's do it. Also extra base trade routes. That's kind of handy. Let's build that port. Let's see if it appears in the right spot graphically. If it shows up somewhere else, that's fine. But um, I hope it appears in the right spot. This uh, this modded, because this river is modded in by the uh, the Imperador Navigable Rivers mod, I think the game has been uh, will have been adjusted to place the port in the right spot. But I suppose it's fine if it doesn't. These guys want stone. All right, I guess I'll sell you some of my stone. I guess I just didn't have extra stone in... Uh, uh, Kafbadania specifically, so... Also, now that this is being constructed, I think I'll probably switch my trades back. Because the stone only needs to be here for when I do the construction. Anything else I can switch to while I have these two slots open, that would make sense. Um... Marble might be kind of good, honestly. What's my noble level here? Do I have any nobles at all in God? I have, I have no nobles in Kafbadania. That's interesting. We're all in other cities. <laughs> um, hmm. Not a lot of stuff that would be super specifically helpful. I guess wood could be good, as this does give us ship recruit speed, but we don't have the ports ready quite yet. And I'm not sure. I think I think I'll still have access to two pieces of wood when I uh, when the port's closer to being done. What's this? Seventy-two. Actually, this is pretty quick. This is just a couple months. You know what? I, I think I'll trade for wood. Yeah, Im importing uh, resources is worth so, a smaller amount than this number, anyways. So we're not losing. We're gonna lose a little bit of money from not importing gold and then switching to wood. But I think I'd just rather import wood. I also, I have to do one internal import, because there's actually not two things of wood anywhere. I'll trade with uh, with Etruria, and I'll trade with myself. That's fine. This isn't worth that much, and we are going to lose that extra wood to trade away. 
But I think it's worth it to get wood secure before I start building ships. Actually, you know what? Um, because one of them is an internal route, I will actually change my mind and go for the wood. Because this, now I just need Etruria to keep their wood, not two different people. So let's trade for gold for now, and then we'll trade for wood when we have the port about to be finished. No need to be too prepared. <laughs> extra gold is extra gold. That's going to help us build ships anyways, so... Yeah. That is good. Let's progress along. Untiring Devotion 3 Stability. There we go. There's that stability event that I was looking for. Available decisions. Here we go. Investigate Tribal Reform. Add the Tribal Reform mission to the mission pool. It is time for our people to consider new methods of rule. Foreign ideals flood our country. Can we truly remain a nomadic people? Enact. All right. So, do we continue the matter of Bantic Commission, or do we start the tribal reform mission, knowing that it will actually take a while and may involve some complicated steps? I think... Let's see. Kartubia is not a target for me. Otherwise, I'd grab this at the very least, just to get access to the claim on Baetica Cordubensis, because these other things are, again, not really in sight. But... I don't. I don't think I want to. I don't think I'll be targeting Kartubia anytime soon. Really, Bantica is the last place I plan to expand into with any sort of fervor. And this was just to get access to another region for uh, levy purposes. This war to get this part here. So I think what I will do is abort the mission. Uh, I guess this does cost stability, which is unfortunate. This. I think this has been an Invictus edition. It is worthwhile though to get access to tribal reform. So. Uh, the stability is fine. We basically just traded the stability we just got from that event in order to do it like this. Tribal reform. The time has come for our great country to transition into a more civilized, sedentary state. Opinions differ greatly on how this can best be achieved, even among our most ardent supporters. Some argue that we should adopt a representative mode of government, while others feel that a hereditary monarchy would be preferable. All right, let's start the mission. Meeting of the Council. The proud heritage of our people has endured for generations, and yet the ever-changing fabric of our existence has brought greater knowledge of the world and the people that surround us. In an extraordinary council meeting, the heads of two of our greatest families, the Boei and the Arosii, have both suggested that it is time for us to abandon our way of rule in favor of a new set of statutes. The Arosii favor the institution known as monarchy. I guess that makes sense. They are currently... No, that's not... Hold on. The Erosii are a different family. So I guess the, the the ruling current tribal family doesn't really have an opinion. Anyways. Um, the Erosii favor the institution known as monarchy, drawing inspiration from the tales of the great Grecian kings, whereas the Boei advocate for an equal system of rule, with uh, Eif, the <laughs> battering ram murderer herself, leading this particular argument. This is a great person to represent the future of democracy, folks. <laughs> a battering ram murderer, allegedly. <laughs> Uh, inspired by tales of the Carthaginian Empire, ah oh, yes, famously democratic, the Carthaginians, and the Athenians of whom we have heard so much. It seems we have much to ponder. All right, so we're going to be going for Republican favoritism. We actually can't right now because the Boei only have uh, two jobs. This will be something we fix right now, I think. Let's put, let's switch around a tech person here. Any Boei. Eight, what are you? Six. Okay, this is a no-brainer. There we go. Republican favoritism. So we're going to get, uh, let's see here, on completion. I guess we get it immediately. Okay, so we now have a uh, modifier. <clears throat> Winds of change. The old statutes are no longer enough to keep our people secure. Whilst it may cause a period of instability, this is a storm we must weather. So we have reduced enact law ca uh, cost, which is something I wish I knew about before, because that would be kind of handy to take advantage of. But we got all the laws that we care about right now. We actually hit Code of Rights before we finish reforming. But I guess it wouldn't matter, because we wouldn't have it for that long. Anyways, back over to the mission. Okay, so now we're just going to focus on the right side of the tree here. So we have to do this and this. So this is going to require uh, Council Legal Authority Law. Which, in fact, is this one here. So we have to switch this over. That's fine. That's going to just cost um, 15 stability and 26 influence. Okay. I wish I'd known about this before, but I think I made the right call before switching where it was. So we'll switch this one over when we have enough uh, political influence. 
And then we also need to have knock the absolute authority law. So let's see. Oh yeah, so that's the same. Okay, so that is fine. This, those, those two things are saying the same thing, basically. And we have to have 100 political influence. So yeah, this mission is going to cost a lot of political influence. That is probably uh, to be expected. And we get lots of loyalty with the Boei family, a, a loss of loyalty with the Erosis family. Okay. And then this one requires Sib level of 40 in Toiletum. Okay, well, we've seen this this requirement before. <laughs> well, Toiletum's on its way there. We'll get 40 Sib level there sooner or later, so that should be fine. Okay, so I'm glad that I started this when I did, because this is going to take a while to get the resources for it. We'll just continue along as is for now. No need to uh, rush things. I think I will, though, spend some PI on more policy changes. Um... Septon True Analysis may need to get changed. This one's fine. This one's really not fine. This one's... Eh. This one's already on that. Okay, yes, yeah, so we're going to leave that alone. Our stability loss is going to hurt this a little bit, but leave it alone. Um, I'm going to change you to be on. Let's see here. These guys are overwhelmingly... Uh, yeah, this is a giant city, and they're all furious. Um, I think this one will probably, given that there's so many population here, because um, harsh treatment is better if it's a lower population province that has low loyalty. I think local autonomy will ultimately be better if it's a higher population province with a, with a low loyalty. Yeah, that did help it a, a fair bit. All right, we may have to take more drastic actions up here. Um, I guess I could move a lot of these tribesmen out. That might be one option I take. Literally, I could just move them over here. Can I move them across the river like this? Hold on. So, Hiberia. Let's just see. We can. Okay. So, this is a, sort of a weird way of doing it, but I think I will move these tribesmen away. Well, mm, It's this, these nobles that are really causing trouble here. I wish that I would, was able to sack this place. Cause I guess it's not a city, I should say. It's just a settlement. It's just a really crowded settlement because of all these people who live here. I think I'm going to save up money for ships. So let's... Uh, well, ah, this is a pretty serious issue, though. All right, I think I will move some tribesmen. All right, so let's move them over from Hiberia. Let's forcibly relocate them to Indibilis. Whatever we can think of to uh, stem that stem that issue. Unfortunately, just about every month we can move one tribesman over. Do it again here. All right, so this is going to start to improve things a little bit. Freaks want wood. All right, <clears throat> that's fine to me. Actually, that was the wood that I will need, and I'm going to have to re readjust my trades to get access to that wood again before I start building ships. Let's move one more tribesman. It's upsetting the tribesmen here a little bit, but they this is this is fine. Just whatever I can think of to help up here. It's pretty severe. Port is almost done. Let's go ahead and start trading for wood now. Cancel these trades. I have to cancel one of my own wood trades as well. So trade for the Etrurian wood, and then in my um, my trade overview, exports. Where am I trading wood? Here it is. Set up an internal trade trade route of wood from September to Alice. All right, we got ourselves some wood. Not that I have money to build the ships right now, because <laughs> I'm moving all these tribesmen. Let's move one more tribesman over, I think. From Hybera. Alright. I hope that'll help a little bit. It's a little hard to tell. These people are just furious. I could actually re replace the fort with a building to help with local happiness, if such a building is to be found on here. Maybe not. 
Yeah, that building that I just described doesn't exist as a building. One of our nobles did leave as well, so I hope that that continues happening. I guess, keeping in mind that if this province becomes disloyal, not that much will happen. I just care about um, it not reaching zero, because then it enters a rebellion. So 33 is, for a province of that size, not actually a huge deal. I probably shouldn't worry as much as I do. I, I probably wouldn't... I shouldn't worry as much as I do about that, because... Um, all right, so the port did construct more or less in the right spots. So that's pretty good. Um, so now we can build ships here. Let's see. What's it going to cost us? Five gold for Liburnians. I think Liburnians are the way to go, given the river bonuses that we've got. We can see here. Yeah. So that's a, uh, let's see here, that's a 20% more river bonus, so if we compare the stats, um, they're faster as well. If, I think that on the rivers, the bonus advantage triremes have is diminished, but keeping in mind as well, I don't actually anticipate any naval combat around here. I guess these guys do have a port here. I guess they have a couple ports. These guys may have navies. Can I see their navy size? No, they have, they have zero ships. I mean, yes, I can see their navy size, but no, they don't have ships. Actually, Tapolia, my ally, does have a ship, so that is that is something. So we're just going to build a super kind of rickety uh, Liburnian naval or a river fleet. And how many guys can fit on one Liburnian? I don't remember how Invictus has uh, changed this, so this is something I need to figure out. I think what I'll do is once I'm able to build a Liburnian, I will do so. And then I'll raise uh, one of my smallest levies to just come over and test out and see. Unless it says it on the Liburnian UI, then I won't need to do that. Also, pirates are roaming around. A little alarming, but okay. All right. Is this enough, or do I need five? I need five, okay. That's fine. This pirate fleet is coming on the river, all right. Looks like the AI knows about the rivers mod. I don't. I guess the AI must be rebalanced to know that these rivers are here. I'm sure that's how it works. <clears throat> I guess we'll find out in the future. All right. First navy. Let's go. Let's build a ship. One Liburnian. Yeah. I think keeping in mind that because I just specifically plan to use these guys for river stuff, I'm not going to bother with triremes right now. Plus, uh, as I've said in previous campaigns, my naval meta and assuming that in weakness didn't rebalance this, which it may have does tend to focus on Liburnians, so let's build one Liburnian. We'll finish in a couple of months. All right, that's pretty good. With the wood going, that's handy. And I think I will keep the wood going until I know how, much, how many Liburnians I need to build. <clears throat> in the meantime, I'm gonna continue moving tribesmen over, I think. And this will hurt the, the, um, the loyalty the provincial loyalty in Iller Kawonia, but it's a lot less severe than over here. Um, let's see. That being said, I think I think I've reduced the tribesmen unhappiness effects enough. These guys are fine now. <clears throat> right, I think we'll leave that alone. I'll save up some money now to build ships. Manpower is recovering nice and steadily. We can do another political influence change. Anything else that needs to be addressed? Yeah. Septentry and Alice needs to get switched back over to be on... Um... Oh yeah, this one doesn't have a colony either, so I can... Let's see. This one I think I switched to local autonomy. Yeah, that's fine. If it's under 0.20, that's kind of what I'm... That's the threshold I'm kind of thinking about here. <clears throat> yeah, stuff over in Terraconesis is not looking phenomenal, but this is a huge province. It's larger than my... Or it's a huge region in terms of my, my section that I control. It's larger than my own home region, so I gotta I gotta be pretty precise with this, with the Terraconesis management. All right. And... Let's see, this one here, I can probably leave alone. So I think with that, I'm now going to use my PI for my mission tree. Spread of ideas from Massilia. Okay. Getting a lot of ideas spread here. That's pretty good. We don't have a lot of monthly research right now because we we're still in the tribal stage, but we are getting a lot of those events, which is quite handy. <clears throat> good stuff. This league is looking about the same. 
these guys. We gotta make sure as well that these guys don't ally somebody in the league, because that would cause trouble. So far they've just been my ally, which is quite handy. They're unlikely to also switch because they're on mercantile stance. So that's pretty good. I could have switched away from dipl uh, diplomatic stance in order to get some sort of bonus, like mercantile stance would help out a lot, but honestly, I think I'd rather... Oh, we have a navy now, look at that. All right. So, as is traditional, I'm going to use the uh, the Latin uh, word for navy, as I understand it, classis one, and we're going to go ahead, and I guess this part's a little necessary, but toiletum, just so that we know where this navy uh, lives normally, so it lives in toiletum. All right, also keeping in mind that the river tiles are tiles, you know, you have to go like that. Okay, so we got ourselves one ship. How many people can fit on this one ship? I'm not sure if there's an easy way for me to test this. Um, let's see here. Not necessarily. Okay, so what we're going to do is raise one of our smallest levies. Because we can't raise just a single unit somewhere. Someone close by, probably from... Uh, what's this one called? Lusitania. Yeah. Probably the Lusitanian levy. Raise them up. Just grab one 500 unit of horse and rush them over here. I could, uh, the thing is, these rivers don't connect, so I could uh, send the ship around to the river that these guys were on, but I'd rather just move the actual army. I think they'll, that'll probably be fine. It'll be faster, I think. So we'll move an army over and just kind of go see what, what we're working with here in terms of weight. If it's still, um, also 1st of October, I think nothing to really worry about here. Also, let's lower uh, fleet maintenance. Let's not forget to do that. Um, <clears throat> I think it should still be 500 per one ship, which would be handy, but I guess we'll see what it says. Because I have a lot of forces to move around, so I need to build ships based on the number of forces I have. I'll save my money until I see. Well, I guess I, I, guess I will build one more ship for now. But I won't build more until I know for sure. I should have done that a little, a little bit ago, but that's fine. All right, so so we can put one on one, so that is good to know at least. Oh, I should have sent other... Okay, this was... <laughs> should have sent them all over so I can test this out correctly. We'll send them all over now, so let's get you off the ship. And then once the rest of them arrive, we will test uh, how many can go on at once. Yeah, I should have just sent them all at the same time. I don't know why I sent just one over, because I need to test for multiple groups. Scholar of the Divine. Uh, Illic... Ilika Tana has, by all accounts, remained a scholar of the Divine Woman much, for much of her life. It caused some embarrassment, therefore, when she was discovered extorting a local temple to an egregiously unreasonable degree. This is just some person in my, in my nation. Before, before reprimanding her, it must be said that it would be expedient to, to our efforts to influence her if we were to brush this under the table. Oh, hello, political influence. Ooh, look at this. I think I will take 10 corruption for 60 influence, given that I need a lot of influence right now for my... Republican re reformations. Um, given that Bracusa, who's now bald, uh, that's fair enough. I think he still looks pretty handsome, in my opinion. Let me let me look at him. All right. Uh, given that he doesn't have any corruption gain, I think ten corruption will probably be okay. So let's uh, go for that, and let's see what this does actually for him. Reduces uh, political influence a little bit, but <clears throat> monthly wage is not a huge deal. I actually like that he has more money, so this is totally fine. Okay, um, now let's use this political influence that we just got to switch this to council legal authority. This will cost 15 stability, so that's not going to help with our stabilization goals, but we need to get this done sooner or later, and we're in a peaceful moment right now, so let's switch this over from absolute authority to council legal authority. Oh, actually, this is reduced too, so this UI is incorrect. No, it's not incorrect. It does say it. Why did it say before that it wasn't changed? Okay, well, 11 stability is a bit less of a of a penalty, so that's pretty good. Go for that. And now we're going to save the rest of this because um, that uh, mission does require 100 PI as well as the PI that we just spent for the law change. So we'll keep an eye on that. Let's see how this has screwed up our loyalty situation. Screwed it up a lot, it looks like. Okay. 
Um, risk of rebellion. Provinces beneath zero loyalty will look to rebel against their owner, seeking to create a war of independence. Care should be taken to quench or satisfy detractors before it is too late. Disloyal states may choose to join them in wars of independence. So in around, in exactly three years, uh, Sussitania might rebel. Right. We are aware that this is an issue. So I guess the game is now letting us know that the timer is kind of ticking with this. I'm trying everything I can. I really shouldn't have added the spot to my land here. Hmm. How would you like to buy some territory from me? <laughs> Sell provinces. Um... Sussitania. Any interest in this? How does this work? This is an Inwictus edition, by the way. <laughs> hmm. I don't know how this works. Can I add money? How does this... It's not letting me click this. I don't know. Maybe they won't agree to it. So we'll, we're not, we're not going to mess around with that. Forces, all right. Let our guys arrive and then test out to see how many uh, how many ships we're gonna need. We have another trade route. Hey, look at that. Just from uh, oh, we have a citizen now too. That's pretty good. All right, I think for now I will trade for precious metals just for money, but we'll come back to that later. May do something else in the future. Yeah, this stability loss isn't going to hurt. But should be okay. Iller Kawonia is now going to be disloyal. But again, I'm not doing it. The thing is, you just can't build <clears throat> in disloyal provinces. As long as it's not at zero, that's what really matters. You just want to avoid disloyalty if you can. Why did this get changed over to this? Was this like this for forever? Okay, I'm not going to worry about that, though. Maybe I should worry about that. I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so no. Uh, let's see. So you can get on the ships. How about you? So it's one cohort per one ship. That's what I thought. So that's what it's like in the base game. Okay. I think that settles it. I guess there's no reason to test if the others can because it's cohort based and not weight based. Because the cavalry has a higher weight than infantry, I think. Or, actually, do they? Hold on. Um, where's my weight location? Three, two, okay, yeah, cavalry, yeah, they, they are heavy, that's what I thought. Okay, so let's go ahead and lower the levy. That was my testing. So it is one cohort per one ship, which handily we know how many cohorts we have, so we can build our number of ships accordingly. We don't need one ship for every cohort necessarily. That, that'd be a lot of ships, given that we do actually have um, four, eight, 12, 16, 20 cohorts. So I could build 20 uh, Liburnians in order to have a fully river-going army. But I'm not sure I need that. But I will build... Um, how about this? Let's order... Do I still have wood going? Yeah, I do. Keeping in mind that the wood bonus is only going to... This actually is helpful to maintain for the whole time I'm building ships. Because ship recruit speed, I don't think is... I think it might be dynamic. It might apply when you build the ship, or when you start building. But I'm going to keep it while I build the ships. Either way. Let's build five Liburnians for now, and kind of see how we're looking after that. And also, I think this is a pretty good chance to actually uh, pause the episode here. I'm going to end a little earlier than usual. We usually go towards the latter half of my 50 to 70 minute time allotment. But... Uh, this is going to be it for this <clears throat> for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. We've started our tribal reform. We're dealing with rebellion, or the risk of it at the very least, up here. We're trying our best to stimmy the issue, but it is definitely a little out of control. I may have to switch this over, actually, to, um, to uh, harsh treatment after all. Hmm, I'll have to think about that between episodes, but in, in the meantime, I will make some calls about how to handle the, the very disloyal Terrakinesis situation, but we've got a navy going, we've got our levies ready to go, our manpower is looking a lot more secure, 
and things in general are progressing nicely. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.